Hey Huskies, I'm Mia Forsyth. And I'm Erica Christie. Welcome to another episode of New Scene. This past weekend, OPRF's dance company, Orcasis, performed their spring concert. The dancers did wonderfully and the lighting was amazing. If you didn't go see it, you really missed out. Hey, I'm Caroline Turner. I've been in Orcasis for two years and I'm a sophomore. I'm Audrey Johnston. I'm a freshman and this is my first year in Orcasis. Orcasis is a dance company at our school and there are two seasons, a fall season and a spring season, and you audition at the beginning of the year. I'm in four pieces. Two of them are more balletic and contemporary, and the other two are hip-hop and a mix of different styles. Well, I'm in two pieces. One of them is a contemporary jazz kind of a piece. The other one is an upbeat musical theater jazz piece. My favorite part of Orcasis is being part of a community that's different from my normal dance studio and being with a group that's so supportive of everyone. My favorite thing about Orcasis is all the little jokes that go around and just hanging out with people backstage and Tech Week was really fun. On May 1st, OPRFHS held their annual honor convocation in the auditorium. The event honored over 500 Huskies who have excelled in academics, extracurriculars, and effectively impacting their community. Over $200,000 was distributed among scholarship awards to the graduating seniors of 2019 and Huskies who are wanting to pursue summer enrichment. For academic awards, the head of divisions nominated students to be honored. One of the most notable awards was the Fritz Meyer, the highest honor to freshmen at the school, which ended in a tie to two promising Huskies. The presentation also included the introduction to Cum Laude Society for juniors, who are in the top 5% of their classes, and seniors who are in the top 15%. Finally, the night ended with 34 seniors who maintained a perfect GPA through seven semesters, receiving the Scholarship Cup. Congrats to all the Huskies who were recognized. On Thursday, April 25th, OPRF's vocal jazz groups had their annual concert. The five exceptional groups brought a wide range of jazz numbers to Little Theater. The pieces ranged from old classics to reinterpretations of much-beloved songs. Accompanied by talented musicians to round out the jazz sound, it was not an event to be missed. Check out the all-female group Overtones, self-dubbed Ovary Tones, in their jazz version of September. Here's a clip. Great news, Huskies. On April 29th, District 200 approved the hiring of LeVar J. Amons as the district's first executive director of equity and student success. Dr. Amons' equity work has included serving on the equity task force that initiated racial equality strategic plan for District 88. He also helped develop an equity action plan for the DuPage County Regional Office of Education. He also founded the Black Educators Network of Suburban Chicago, which shares best practices for creating a culture of academic success for African-American students and is a member of the Illinois Coalition for Educational Equity Leaders. We are so lucky to have him on our staff to continue to promote fair and safe education for all of our students. Naomi Hildner is one of OPRF's longest standing teachers and one of OPRF's most beloved as well. She has taught English classes here for the last 25 years and has announced that this year will be her last year with us before she retires. Veronica Rooney, one of our reporters, interviews this Husky legend. <laughs> when I come to school, every single day I feel that I have to be on. Yes. You know, uh, I have to be inspirational. Um, and uh, I want to hear what everybody is, is thinking. I still look at this school and I think it is a real gem of our community. I think that people will still move to Oak Park to go to this school. When you're a teacher, the, your students are part of that performance, what happens in that classroom. So uh, you are only instigating, starting, inspiring the conversation, but it's a constant conversation 
a give and take. I have always been fired up about youth. When I was very young, I was about maybe 10, 9 or 10, and I lived in Cleveland. And Dr. Spock, the baby doctor, Dr. Spock, not, <laughs> not Mr. S Spock, live long and prosper, uh, <laughs> um, uh, he used to come to Cleveland every year to do an anti-nuclear testing march. And at the end of the march, he would say, it warms my heart to see so many young people here. You will save us, the young people. And I still believe that. After all these years, I believe it. The young people will save us. On Wednesday, April 24th, the Faces of OPRF Talent Showcase took place in the main entrance of the school. All seniors participating displayed their respective talents, ranging from spoken word to musical performances to food art to drink making. The final category was a formal dress category where the contestants answered questions. The night ended with a round of applause from those in attendance. Happy Apple Pie Shop is a bakery located on Harrison Street in Oak Park. This is a place where people with and without disabilities can come and work. Happy Apple Pie Shop sells delicious pies, tea, and coffee. Now here's an interview from the owner. Hi, I'm Michelle Mascaro, and this is the Happy Apple Pie Shop here on Harrison Street in Oak Park. The Happy Apple Pie Shop is a blended work environment for people with and without disabilities. And we were inspired to open it because I have a daughter who has an intellectual disability, and I always wondered where she and her friends uh, would find a place to work. Uh, work for people with disabilities is very hard to find. Only about uh, 10 to 15 percent of people with disabilities are actually employed in gainful employment. So we sought to create a place where more people could be employed. Our single location is right here. We do all our baking here on the premises, and we sell our product here. Um, the product that people seem to like the most, the pie they like the most, is our apple pie. Uh, people seem to always go for a pie that they uh, know from childhood or memory, and that's apple pie. Um, we also make lots of other pies. Our uh, chocolate pie is very uh, popular, as well as our honey pie. It's very, very popular. At this time, we're not sure uh, how or uh, we would uh, further develop the program. We are just in our second year, and so uh, we just started our third year, actually, and we're starting to figure out, well, what would expansion look like if we wanted to expand? Really, our most important goal is to make sure that we have a place where people who work here, both people with and without disabilities, are seen by the public and uh, have a chance to say hi to our customers. Next, we have an interview with a local celebrity and star of America to Me, Senior Grant Lee. Hi, I'm Paul, and welcome to Access OPRF, the show where we invite the celebrities of the school to share their stories with us. Today, we've got two great guests coming on. First, I'd like to bring out my co-host for this segment, Nora. Now I'd like to introduce Grant Lee, a senior here at OPRF. He was one of the focuses of the documentary America to Me, and today he's going to share his experiences with us. Hi, Paul. Glad to be here. So, Grant, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, yeah, I'm a senior, and I'm a uh, just finishing up my last year at high school, I'm going to be going to Ohio State and yeah, freshman year as part of a documentary, America to Me, which was all about sort of looking into a diverse school and looking at why there were still problems with equity and, you know, it was an amazing experience that, you know, I'm always going to remember for sure, yeah. Um, can you go in more detail and more depth about the documentary? Yeah, so we basically, it's a 10 part, uh, episodic series and they filmed uh, multiple students and it was sort of over the course of a school year and just sort of looking at how in a diverse community that we still have this gap in uh, th this achievement gap and they sort of they go through some of the students lives they try and get into the administrations trying to see the problems we weren't able to view as much as we wanted to because some parts of the administration didn't really want us to uh, view it but yeah and it's it's a story that's you know that's endearing you know has some fun things to look at and it's also it really makes you think and you know I think Oak Park especially has been taking it taking it well and uh, we're trying to use it as you know as well as we can for the future. That's nice. How did you um, join the project or get picked for the documentary? Yeah so um, there was a, a email that was sent out uh, before uh, school started freshman year that like if people were uh, you know they thought about wanting to do it they could go to an interview um, at the Oak Park Library and I went with my family we just sort of talked about our lives and what we can maybe contribute and then you know I think 
maybe a couple weeks later they told us you know you're in if you want to be in you're in and we sort of had to talk about it like you know because there's all the not exposing but you're sort of putting like your family out there yeah. and we sort of had to talk about if we want to be involved in it and I was like you know I'd be down I think it could be really good to be involved in this so I was like let's do it and they the first the the first day they started was the first day of school so how did you feel your first day of filming it was yeah I was nervous like the some them setting up the mic just them being around me and then being in the building especially on my first day first off being on my first day that was already I was already nervous enough but um for the first day like just having the cameras on me and having to walk around and just everyone look at me it was sort of weird and I tried to just play it off like nothing was happening mm -hmm. but I was pretty much sweating that whole day yeah really really nervous um, what's one thing that you think you would change about the documentary if you could change anything? Um, I'd say there were some parts that didn't, never lied, but definitely, like, there were some things that, especially, I had to look at my part before it, like, all was put together and came out, and there were some parts where, like, we tried to, like, you know, maybe add something in or try and mm -hmm. um, edit something, but it was sort of, it was harder because it was like to keep this it big, filming. yeah, yeah, they had to keep filming, it was like this, they had over like a thousand hours of footage and they had to make it as best they could. And I'm still, I'm so happy with what they made, of course, mm -hmm. but if like, if I had some of the decisions, some things for me would have been changed for sure. Is there anything that you thought was done perfectly with the film? Definitely, definitely when it came to editing, when it came for each episode, when it went from student to student, because mm -hmm. I feel like, like, see, I didn't like meet a lot of the students. Like, I didn't meet any of the students. We didn't know each other. But in certain episodes, when it would go from scene to scene, it just it was so weird how like some of not, maybe not the issues, but like some of the experiences we were having from scene to scene were so similar. So it just feel it uh, felt like it flowed seamlessly like through each scene of like it might have been a different student but they might have been going through a similar issue or like it was just like or the episode just had an overall issue that each student was just trying to get through so I just thought that was great how they edited that that's great mm -hmm. all right till next time huskies thanks for watching this week's episode of new scene